Hi, this is Nicholas from ST Microelectronics. In this video, I will teach you how to generate custom signals using PWM and DMA of our STM32 microcontrollers. This is part one, there will be a part two. The objective is to generate custom signals using PWM mode of our STM32 timers and the DMA. We will output PWM signals on the channel one of a selected timer. For this exercise, you will need the following equipment. The STM32 board that we will be using is the Nucleo-H745ZI-Q, as shown here. You will need a micro USB cable in order to power, program and debug the board. You will need also a scope in order to verify the results. In the description of this video, I have added a link to download a zip file containing the materials needed to perform this exercise. So please go to the description of this video and download the zip file and extract it somewhere on your disk. We will use the content of this file during this exercise. Regarding the software tools, we will be using the stm 2 CubeID. This is a tool from ST that integrates stm 2 CubeMX for project configuration and code generation. This is also a full IE where you can build your project and debug it. The goal of this exercise is to generate some custom signals. For this, we will be using PWM mode of a timer and DMA. This method will be using the DMA to transfer a continuous data of a sine wave output to a timer CCR register. The timer CCR register controls the width of the PWM duty cycle. When using the DMA to transfer the data, the Cortex M core is free to do other tasks. We can generate any custom waveform by feeding the data of the signal to the timer CCR register via DMA. In this exercise, we will generate a sine wave. Let's say that we want to generate a sine wave. To do this, we will first compute our sine wave data table with 10 degrees angle resolution. This is shown in the table that is part of the zip file you have downloaded. An offset and normalization are applied to the sine wave output to obtain our CCR register data points. Optionally, the sine wave can be computed directly from the STM32H7. Let's have a look at the data. So this is the file that I downloaded from the description of the video. I'm going to unzip it, extract it here. All right, so in this file, you will find you know, later on the code to be added to the project. Then I have also here a PDF of all the different steps you know, to follow if you want to follow uh, later on. And here is the data. And that's actually the project, the full project you know, that I zipped here, that is running fine. So let's look at the data. So this is part of this table here. I'm going to open it. This is the content of the table. So as you can see, 36 data points. So one every 10 degrees. Then here we have the radiance uh, version, the sine wave, the positive offset, the normalization of the data, and then the actual data that we will uh, program into the CCR register of the timer. So as you can see, the stm 2 H745 has a lot of timers. For this exercise, we will select the timer 4 because the timer 4, you know, fulfill our goal and we don't require complementary outputs, you know, for this exercise, only one channel and timer 4 will do the job. Now it's time to start the exercise. To get started, we will open stm 2 CubeID. So double click on it. Select your workspace and launch. We are going to create a new project. So you go File, New, STM32 Project. In the Target Selection, select Board Selector. In the Part Number, type Nucleo-H745ZI-Q. Now click here and press Next. In this window, Give a name to your project. So I'm going to call it STM32H7 underscore custom underscore signal. And then press finish. 
for the board project options, we will select the default settings of the peripherals. So press yes. We're going to change the perspective of the tool in order to configure our project. So please press yes. Okay, so this is our STM32 CubeMX perspective of the tool. So you can choose the pinout configuration, but first we will select the clock configuration. We will run, make sure that we are running at 480 megahertz and 240 megahertz here. So this is the maximum clock the STM32 H745 can operate at. So we are running from the HSE, which is the external clock, at 8 MHz. So this is a clock that is uh, delivered by the ST-Link on board. And then using the PLL, we are running at 480 MHz here and 240 here. So make sure you have this configuration. Otherwise, you can also uh, run you know, from the HSI. It's perfectly fine with the PLL, and you can set up 480 and 240. You just need to enter the value that you want to run out, enter, and the tool will find the configuration for you. So our clock configuration is configured properly. Now we're going to select or configure the timer for. So go to Pinout and Configuration tab, open Timers, and select Team 4 for Timer 4. For the runtime context, we will select the Cortex M7. So click on Cortex M7, and we will use the channel 1 to generate the waveform, so the sine wave. So enable the channel 1 and select PWM generation CH1. Now we're going to configure the timer itself. So in the configuration here, so you can expand a little bit. All right, in the parameter settings, first we'll select the mode that we will use. So we're going to use a center aligned mode one. So there are different modes of counting, up, down, or center aligned. In this exercise, we'll use the center aligned mode one. Now we're going to select the frequency of the signal that we want to generate. To do this, we need to program the counter period. In order to generate some four kilohertz signals, with the clock configuration that we have and a prescaler of zero, which is a divider by one, we need to input for the counter period 30,000. Now scroll down here for the auto reload preload, enable it. Scroll down for the PWM, okay, generation channel one, we'll select a PWM mode one. So which is the default one. And then I'm going to enter an initial value. So put any value different than zero. So this is the initial value that will be updated anyway by the DMA. So we don't really care about this value. I put one. We will keep the rest of the configuration by default. To configure the DMA, in the configuration, click on DMA settings. Click on add, select, Timer for channel one. Expand a little bit more. So the direction is going to be different. For our case, we'll do a memory to peripheral. So select memory to peripheral because the table will be in RAM. And then we'll do transfer from SRAM to the timer. So memory to peripheral. All right, let's scroll down. So for the mode, we'll use a circular mode, so because we want to generate in continuously a signal, so let's use the circular mode instead of normal mode. Then for the transfers, we'll use words, because this is, you know, what my data are going to be. So word, word, for the peripheral and the memory. And we'll enable the FIFO. For the threshold, we use the full uh, threshold. We will keep the rest of the configuration by default. We are done now with the configuration of the project. So go here and save your project. So this will generate the code from this configuration. So press yes. And then we're going to change perspective because we're going to enter a C and C++ perspective where we can edit our code. This is the end of part one. Now please go to the part two of this video.